Hello, this is the tutorial for SAM Project 1A, Word Module 3, Creating a Business Letter. So when you come to the screen after clicking the link in your course, you're just going to start here and work from right to left, uh, from left to right. So first thing, you're going to click Download All. And you'll see it automatically opened these docs in my case. These are the uh, instructions. Now, if you have multiple screens, it's handy to put them on a, another screen so that another monitor so that you can just follow along. If you want them printed, you can print them, whatever works for you. Then the other thing is, so here we have the document we're actually going to be working in. I'm going to read through this in direction step by step and work through this project. While you're working through this tutorial, feel free to pause the video at any time so that you can complete the tasks you need to complete for this project. This is a practice project. This is not a project that will go into the gradebook, even though it gives you a grade at the end. That is just for your own practice to see what skills you still need to work on. So you'll notice as you work through the projects in this text that the beginning always starts the same, this getting started section. It says save the file, and it's the file that you currently see on the monitor, as, and it gives it again, with the differences, there is a two here at the end instead of a one. All right, so I'm going to go file, save as. Now, I would suggest that you put a folder somewhere on your computer where you can keep the projects for this course. For the purposes of this tutorial, and so I can find it quickly, I'm just going to put this on my desktop. And you can see I'm going to go over here and change the one to a two. If you do, do not do that, it will not let you submit. All right, so I've saved. It also says to complete this project, you will also need the following files, support, etc. And that was downloaded when you clicked download all at the beginning. Also, it says with the file, and there's our file name open, ensure that the first and last name is displayed in the footer. So I scroll down here and I see that it has my first and last name. Now we're at the project steps. Step one, as an event coordinator at Advantia Biotech, you are drafting a cover letter and information sheet about an upcoming biotechnology conference for your manager, Keisha Valentine. Insert the missing letterhead picture for the cover letter as follows. So 1A states, copy the letterhead picture from the document, support, etc. So now we need to go to where that support file is. So if I click on my folder where my downloads are, because you download it all, you can see that it is right here. You most likely will need to click Enable Editing. So we're going to copy this. So there's many ways you can copy. Um, you can right click and copy. You can also do Control C 
and copy. You can go up here and click copy. Just copy it. You can either then close the file or minimize it. 1B states, paste the picture in the first blank paragraph at the top of the letter while keeping source formatting to preserve the original design of the letterhead. So to do that, you'll notice the paste options, there's three different ones. And when your mouse is over it, right here it says keep source formatting. So that's the one we want. Two in the blank paragraph below the letterhead picture. So that would be right here. Insert the current date using the May 5, 2021 format. Sprinkle May 5, 2021. On page two, so we've already went over here to page two. Format the picture of the Advantia Biotech logo as follows to correct its placement. And we're on this right here. So you'll notice that when you click on an image, you get the picture format toolbar. So make sure you click on that so that this ribbon shows. All right. I only clicked on the picture once. If you had clicked on it twice, this would have popped up. So you can do it either way. So the first thing we have to do is we have to flip the picture horizontal. Okay. So that is right here under rotate. And right here it says flip horizontal. And you notice that it already did it to the image. I didn't even have to click. 3B is change the position of the picture to position in top right with square text wrapping. So right here is position. So they want top right. Well, not too many show an image in top right, but if you put your mouse right here, position in top right with square text wrapping. You don't, you see the image move a little. Really, that's a formatting that uh, works in the background. We're going to use the Format Painter to copy the formatting for the paragraph 7th Annual Conference on, right up here, to the paragraph hosted by Advantia Biotech, right here, to draw attention to the host company. So, if you've not used Format Painter before, it's right here but you need to highlight the text you want it to copy. And all this is copying is the formatting. It's not copying the words. So now I'm going to, you see the paintbrush? Now I'm going to put that over these words, let it up, and it automatically applies that formatting. We are on step five already at the bottom of page one. It says change the font size of the paragraph conference highlights to 16 point to match the font size of the other main topic headings. So this is conference highlights. We could have done it here on the mini bar, but I'm going to go up here and click on 16. We are now on step six. Clear the formatting from the paragraph, the innovations in biotechnology, dot, 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 research and application. So we are simply removing formatting. So we're going to hi highlight this. Let's try this again. My mouse is not happy this morning. We're going to highlight this. And we're actually going right up here where you see the A with this. This is supposed to be an eraser. And it says clear all formatting. And we're just going to click on that. And you'll see the change in the font. Number seven, format the picture of the conference attendees as follows to improve the clarity of the picture and add alt text for screen readers. So the first thing we're going to do is click on this. We've got our 
in each tool ribbon up here now. The first thing is brightness. We need plus 40% contrast, plus 20% correction. And sorry for the mouse issues today. So again, you can mouse over these and it will show you what it is. So here's the plus 40, but the contrast isn't right. Here it is, plus 40, plus 20. Just click on it and it is now in effect, okay? Add the following 7B states, add the following alt text description to the picture. People attending the 2020 conference. Alt text is important for any digital documents, not just for individuals that might have uh, accessibility issues, but to make it the best experience for all users of a document. So again, we're clicked on the image. You can see alt text is right here. If you click on it, a box opens over here and the alt text they tell us to put in is people attending the 2020 conference. Now, please note, this should not be the name of the image. That's not telling the person who may have vision issues what the image is. It needs to be descriptive. So, it almost tells the purpose of it being there also. So, people attending the 2020 conference. That tells you the purpose right there. They're showing you what this conference looked like last year. There's no save. You can just close this area when you're done adding the alt text. We're on step eight now, and it's taking us to page three. Add smart art as follows in the blank paragraph after the conference programs. So it's right here. We're going to insert the basic matrix smart art from the matrix section of the smart art gallery. So smart art is under insert, smart art, and they already told us to go to matrix, and we want simply the basic matrix. We're going to click OK, and it is inserted. If you've never worked with smart art before, there's two ways that you can add text. You can either do it over here or you can do it over here. You'll note that in the instructions, it states that if you type here, they want you to type a number, press enter, and then type a word. If you're doing it over here, you do not click enter. Okay, so we're going to do it over here. One, enter testing. I, oh, it helps if I, the joys of putting your hands in the wrong spot. Testing, there we go. I usually prefer working directly in the smart art. When I work over here, I usually have a lot more text. But when it's just simply like this, I usually work in the smart art. It's a matter of preference. Notice how it automatically changes the font size to match the text that you're entering. All right, now I'm just going to click out of that so you can see what this looks now. However, 9 is having us format the smart art as follows to make it more attractive. So we're going to change the colors to gradient range accent 1. So we need to be clicked on this as a whole. And you'll notice we have two options here, formatting for the smart art or the smart art design itself. Okay. So we are changing the colors to gradient range accent one. And because it's applying to the whole smart art, it goes here. And I believe 
gradient range, yep, accent one. Again, when you don't know what it is, you just put your mouse over it until you find the one you need. Then we are going to change the style to subtle effect. Now, you can go through this by row, or if you click the arrow with the line on top, that will show you all the styles. And subtle effect, nope, that's not it. There's subtle effect right there, and we're set. Okay, so that's all we're doing with that smart art. Smart art. <laughs> so let's keep going here. We are on number 10. Set a tab stop. All right, so to set a tab stop, they want it, okay, set a tab stop at six inches with the right alignment and leader option two. For the paragraph days one, 1 and 2, May 10th and 11th. So we are going to highlight this. Actually, we don't need to highlight it. If we just click here, and then we need to open the paragraph window and click on tabs. And this will be 6 inches and right. Alignment leader option two. And I believe that's it. And you can see how it automatically puts it in so it matches down here. All right, now we are at step 11. Complete the table for days one and two and format it as follows to be consistent with the table for day three. So we need to insert a row at the end. Now, again, there's multiple ways to do everything in Microsoft Office. I just usually, if I'm just inserting one row, I go to the end and hit tab and there's my new row. In the new row, we're gonna enter the data shown in figure one, which is energy research and four. Then we need to apply the grid table for accent one table style to the table. So we're going to click here. And we're going to look at this grid table for accent one. Grid table. Well, it's not this one. Oh, we're trying to match. Is it this one? Ha! Found it. There we go. <laughs> All right, that completes task 11. On page 4, we're going to add a border to the heading paragraph. Dallas City Attractions. So we're going to click in here. They want to 12A states apply a top border to the paragraph. So we're going to go here and say top. But now they want us to change the line style of the border to dashed. Whoops. My apologies. Clicked on the wrong thing. Here we go. Borders and shading. So, please note, it said it, it's the third option. It, you might, it might be, it's basically choose the first dash one you come across. So mine is fourth one down. Change the color of the border to turquoise accent one darker 25%. So you're going to go to color. And I believe it's this one. Yep, there we go. And then they want us to change it to one and a half points. Click OK. And there you will see our dotted border. Step 13. Format the Dallas picture in the Dallas City Attractions section as follows to make the picture and the corresponding text easier to read. We're going to flip 
the Dallas picture horizontally to orient and the text properly. So we're going to click on picture format just like we did before, flip horizontally. Change the text wrapping to tight. So wrap text, tight. And last, we're going to recolor the picture to use turquoise accent color one light. Which is right here. Whoops, no, right here. Okay, oh, there we go. This is correct. In the blank paragraph in the Dallas City Attractions section, so it's right here, insert a table as follows to provide suggested attractions. Insert a table with two columns and four rows. <clears throat> so go to insert two columns, four rows. Add text to the table as shown in Figure 2. I'm going to add this now. Feel free to pause the video as you do this yourself, or you can just keep this running as I add it. Remember, the text has to be entered exactly as they stated. If not, they will mark it wrong. Next, we're going to format the Submit Abstracts shape in the For More Information section as follows to apply a design similar to the Registration shape. So we're going to change the shape style I'm going to go up here, get in shape styles, moderate effect red, accent six. We're going to find moderate effect. Yep, there we go. Moderate, moderate effect red, accent six. Now we're going to apply the tight reflection touching shape effect. From the reflection gallery. So tight reflection touching. Yep, it's the very first one there. All right, we're now to step 16. Insert a shape as follows to complete the options available at the Advantia Biotech website. Insert a rectangular rounded corners to the right of submit abstracts shape. So get clicked off of that. We need to go to insert shapes. Go down to, whoop, went by it, rectangles. Okay, we now have the T cursor that is going to allow you to put the shape in. Add the text brochure to the new shape. So you can right click and say add text and type in brochure. Resize the shape to the height of 0.6 inches and a width of 1.1. So I'm going to go up here. And now we have that done. Position the shape using an absolute horizontal position of 2.9. So we're going to go here, and absolute position of 2.9 to the right of the column, which it already defaults to that, and an absolute vertical of 0.03. Whoops, went a little too far here. below paragraph, which again, it already defaulted. Click, and you can see it moved slightly based on where you inserted the shape. We're going to use the format painter to apply the formatting of the registration shape to the brochure shape. This is a little bit different from when you're doing it with text. With text, you need to highlight the text click Format Painter, and then highlight the text you want it applied to. Here you're going to just click on the shape. 
make sure you do not have a cursor here or it will not work. You need to go back to home, click on format painter. Okay. We now have the paintbrush. So we're going to click on brochure and you notice it changed so it matches registration. Step 17 is check the spelling and grammar. If you don't know how to do this already, it's review, spelling and grammar. Oop. It does say to ignore names, so we can just ignore all for Advantia. There's a date issue here, so we can click on that. There's a typo here, so we can click on that, and that's it. Your document should look like the final figure on the following pages. So if you scroll down in your instructions, you'll see what it's supposed to look like. This is helpful to reference in your instructions to reference what the final document look, what looks like in case you're reading the instructions you're like I have no clue what they're talking about. You can just look down at the finished product and go oh I get it now. So it is very helpful to reference that final project example while you're working on the project. So we've already saved it with the correct new file so I'm going to close this file now it's time to go to here. So I am going to open my desktop. And I'm going to minimize this just a little bit because that way I can just drag and drop. And drag it over and we'll drop it in. Now if there was a problem with the file name, it would give you a warning here and it would tell you what's wrong. Okay, so in this case, everything's fine. Once you see the file here, see it's September 8th, 741, you're going to click Submit. Now, I want to point out, I have worked on this already just checking out send gauge for this year and you get you there are two things here a graded summary report and a study guide we're going to talk about both once i click submit this also points out that you are allowed to submit three times this is not a graded assignment as far as it goes into the grade book for the semester but the point is so you can improve on skills that need a little bit more work so let's click Submit. Let's see how I did. It said Submitted uh, Successfully Graded. Attempt 3 Graded Summary Report and Study Guide. You can also view all reports from all of your attempts at any time right here. So first item is the Graded Summary Report. And I received 99 out of 100. Let's get it back on the screen. So if you just go through here, you can see we're looking for the red X. Okay, so when I did the Dallas City Attractions, I just chose the wrong order. Now, in this case, it's up to you whether you would want to redo this assignment. We went through the process correctly. We just did not choose the correct border that they would like. So it's not that we don't know the skill, we just didn't choose the one they wanted. Okay, so that's all that was wrong with this one. However, let's say you're like, well, I'm just not getting how to change that border style. This is where the study guide comes in. So the study guide, and it's going to take just a second to load, will help you with any steps that you're having trouble with. So let's just go ahead and make this big. That was 12 and format a paragraph order. Okay. So you'll notice these are all links. So 
This is the step we're having trouble with. If you click on it, it will open a study guide. You can watch them do it. You can practice it yourself and apply it. You don't have to do all three. You could just do observe and it's like, oh, I get it. I get it now. I see them doing that. Okay, you can do whichever you want. But the point is this is going to walk you through how to improve that skill that you did not have correctly on the project. Okay. Theoretically, everyone should get at least a 95% or better because you have this opportunity to improve your skills. As I just mentioned, you may not always choose to resubmit, especially when it's a practice project, because if you're looking at that report and you're like, okay, I get it, I just chose the wrong dashing, but I know how to do it. Okay, you're good to go. There's no reason to resubmit. If you have any questions about this process, please let me know. Remember, anything in the introduction and the uh, practice and review is, does not go into the grade book for the semester. Yes, there's grades because it's telling you the skills that you need to improve on, but it's not going into the grade book for the semester. The projects and what other, other, what other assignments there may be in the assessment section will go into the grade book. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.